As we recognize the anniversary of Earth Day, one of the challenges facing all Americans right now is the high cost of energy and the continuing debate over clean energy. Energy is critical to our economic and national security. We can and we must start meeting American energy needs with American resources. You know, it wasn't that long ago that America was one of the leading exporters of oil. Today, we import nearly two-thirds of it. Yet, since that time, we have done so little to prepare for our country's current or future energy needs, and we are suffering the consequences. In the Pacific Northwest, we have benefited from clean, renewable hydropower. And as the ranking Republican on the Water and Power Subcommittee, I am working hard to tell a good news story about hydropower. That's why I was so pleased to see the Today Show highlighting Grand Coulee Dam and the positive impact it has had in the Pacific Northwest and more specifically, Spokane. In case you didn't see it, I wanted to share it with you. And this morning on our special week-long series, Green Power Today, we are focusing on water. Hydroelectricity is a relatively inexpensive form of energy. Many experts say it's a better alternative than solar or wind power because water is so abundant. NBC's Kevin Tibbles is just back from a visit to the largest hydroelectric plant in the country. I'm anxious to hear about this. Kevin, good morning. Well, good morning, Matt. It may not be exactly new. Hydropower has been around since the Industrial Revolution and the water wheel. But it is relatively cheap and relatively clean. For example, did you know that people on the Pacific Northwest pay about half the electrical bills of people on the East do because they use water instead of coal? As our thirst for power grows, quenching it becomes a greater challenge. Today, a traditional source is undergoing a renaissance, hydroelectric power from water. Well, it is a clean, renewable source of energy. It doesn't contribute to the greenhouse gas effects as a traditional coal-fired plant might. It doesn't have the nuclear waste problem. And when it comes to generating hydropower, the Grand Coulee Dam in Washington State, spanning the mighty Columbia River, remains a formidable player. The Grand Coulee Dam is not only the biggest source of hydroelectric power in North America, it is also an engineering marvel. 550 feet tall, just short of a mile across, and harnessing the power of 6.2 trillion gallons of water to light up our cities. So how does hydroelectric power work? First, a dam is built on a large river, creating huge quantities of water in a reservoir. Gravity causes the water to pour through massive tubes called penstocks. The rushing water turns a giant turbine propeller, and the shaft of that propeller goes up into the generator. The more the propeller turns, the more electricity the generator produces. This is the largest hydroelectric generator in the world. The shaft alone is 11 feet across and weighs 250 tons. Unlike wind or solar power, a hydroelectric plant can turn on or off like a spigot. We have a fairly quick response time, so basically if the demand goes up, we can start generating more power fairly quickly. This is the King Columbia River and the Big Grand Coulee Dam. In 1918, when Wilfred Wood's father proposed the idea for a dam on the Columbia, people laughed. Nowadays, hydropower is really gold. It's more than gold. We're standing on one of the generators. I mean, how many people could this power up? Well, this generator here uh, can produce enough po power for about 100,000 people. The Grand Coulee powers the Pacific Northwest and reaches a total of 11 states, sending electricity as far east as Chicago and as far south as Los Angeles if needed. 60% of the city of Spokane's electricity comes from hydropower, much of it from the Grand Coulee. And the city of Spokane's economy really grew around having hydroelectricity, which was cheap, almost free electric power. But there is an environmental cost. Damming large rivers has impacted native Indian communities whose livelihood depends on salmon fishing. Whenever you put an impediment in the water, like a dam, you're going to stop the free migration of fish. Still, here at the Grand Coulee, they expect to provide millions of megawatts for years to come. And it's still going strong. Absolutely. Uh, Grand Coulee Dam is as relevant today as it was back in the 1940s. And as the demand for power continues to rise, maybe even more. 
And Matt, speaking of the salmon, some of the newer dams actually have salmon bridges built into them so the fish can get up and downstream. That's something that they're trying to look at at the Grand Coulee. Now, the Grand Coulee, how big is it? Enough cement went into that structure to go around the world, make a sidewalk around the world, not once, but twice. That's a big dam. <laughs> Kevin, a big thanks dam. very much for the information. We appreciate okay. it. As you just saw, hydroelectric dams across the West, and especially in Washington State, have provided us with an abundant supply of clean, affordable, and renewable energy. In fact, these dams provide nearly two-thirds of our state's electricity. These dams have kept the Pacific Northwest, quote, carbon footprint at half of the rest of the country. For example, the removal of the lower Snake River dams would add 5.4 million tons of CO2 to the atmosphere each year. And it would take three nuclear, six coal-fired, or 14 gas-fired power plants to replace their electricity generation. At a time of growing energy demand, it makes no sense to throw this energy source away. I'm committed as we move forward with the debate on global climate change and how to reduce our carbon emissions that hydropower be recognized for the important role it has played in the Pacific Northwest. If the Chicago Climate Exchange can accept hydro from Chelan County PUD as a positive offset, Congress should be able to do the same.